I'm very happy to be here tonight to tell my story. For many of the years I lived and grew in my country, Uganda, I never heard of a word like hate or homophobia directed to a small group of people. I never heard of the persecution of people because of their sexuality. But homophobia came to Uganda. And soon, many LGBT people, including me, were living under fear. We were never sure if the next day would pass by without being arrested or attacked or blackmailed. I recall a friend who was followed and beaten in his house and died in hospital. I recall another who committed suicide by burning himself. Many such incidences, unfortunately, were never documented as we had no good reason to trust the police. Many police support the anti-gay witch hunt, and some use it as an opportunity to blackmail gay people. Often, if someone was beaten because they were LGBTI, the police investigations wanted to just call it a robbery. Just this year, another friend escaped being murdered when he was attacked, badly beaten, and told to die in his own house. His neighbors did not come to help him, and he never reported to the police. In 2006, even when I had a broken leg and was on crutches, I was arrested and locked in jail for two days, taken to police doctor for medica medical examination. The person who filed a complaint against me wanted money, and the investigating officer helped him to get it from me. In order to avoid going to court, in the end, I paid the equivalent of $1,000, which was split between the police and the complainant. In the meantime, the media was writing about me and printing my photo and calling me a child molester. That was the worst thing ever. I felt so unsafe and not able to walk around do my job, or even show my face. What can I do? Where can I go? Questions came, but I always encouraged myself to stay and face it. Despite all this, I still fought and stood for my community and the right to be who I am. Each week, I was in the courts of law to negotiate and bail out many of my colleagues who had been arrested for sex work. Many felt unsafe, but I would and will never be ashamed of my sexuality or my community <laughs> and who I am. I worked with the community members to make sure the people knew how to stay safe. But unfortunately, we couldn't always stay safe. In 2011, my, colleague, my colleagues and I, and in fact the whole world, were shocked about the murder of one of Uganda's leading activists, a colleague and friend, David Kato. His death came only weeks after a court ruling against a leading newspaper for exposing gay people and calling for us to be hanged. Many people were targeted as a result of such outings, not just for threats and beatings, but for extortion and being set up for arrest. Members of the community were approached by people saying they wanted to also be a part of the gay community. But these people instead intended to extort 
or blackmail us or gather evidence to turn us to the police. In 2012, I was summoned by police after someone I was chatting with on Facebook printed the Facebook chat and my picture, went to police and reported that I was a homosexual hitting on him. I was summoned and this time I stood firm and admitted my sexuality. Our community needed an international spotlight and support. I was invited to the US by an American Facebook friend named Nathaniel to come and speak about the plight of the Ugandan LGBT community. I was conflicted about leaving because my close friend and director of my organization, Spectrum Uganda, was facing charges under Penal Code 145, Canon Knowledge Against the Order of Nature. But we needed resources to continue the plight, the fight, and we needed a voice to continue lobbying and telling the world. So I came to the US, and three days later, the president of Uganda signed the anti-homosexual bill into law. If it was possible, everything got worse. During broad daylight, witch hunting and targeting of LGBT persons, storming houses, arrests, and more extortion went on. I was stunned and traumatized and far away from home as many of my community fled the country and became refugees in Kenya and neighboring countries. It was tough. Oh my God. I was concerned about my family and my friends, including friends staying at my home. I had to tell them to leave for their own safety. I really wanted to be home, but received strong advice and reasonable arguments about my return and my safety. As I considered staying in the US, I felt like I was denying my own those I have served and kept around me and those who have been there for me. My friends on ground told me it wasn't safe and that my picture had been running in the media for a whole week and my name repeatedly mentioned on Christian radio stations. My hosts decided to contact GLAD seeking for their advice and services. I didn't think at that time I needed an attorney, but they politely asked me to consider if I just wanted to meet and talk about possibilities. I agreed and we came to GLAD. All I recall of that first meeting is that I was crying and not agreeing with them. I told Jensen, Allison, and Carissa that I wasn't interested in asylum. But the more I thought about it, I realized I could serve my community best by staying alive and speaking up and raising money for my community. Days later, I found myself back at GLAD and surprised Allison. When I said yes, I wanted to proceed with asylum. I was ready, and I must say, GLAD is the best team of professionals I have ever worked with and met. And of course, not forgetting Hima Sarang, 
hopefully. Not only did I receive asylum, but GLAD helped me tell my story and that of my community nationally and internationally. GLAD connected me with the health and other services I needed. I want to say thank you to Alison for the tireless nights asking me questions back and forth. Jason for being truly a professional. Carissa for being the mind behind managing publicity. Hima, I don't know how to ever say thank you. I know I know I was privileged to have these great, wonderful people and professionals supporting and fighting for me to be protected by the United States government. <laughs> Friends, my asylum has surprised many but it's about the skills and commitment. Solidarity, Ubuntu, humanism, humanity, umoja, togetherness, that is at GLAD. I must say, you all here tonight, your money is at the right place and doing the right thing. <laughs> this is something tangible, something you can do to bring change in our world. Long live glad, aluta continua, and God bless America. Thank you.